welcome as well. Um, as many people know, on October 23rd, we released for public comment the proposed invasive species regulations uh, that were, were developed in collaboration with Ag and Markets. So mm -hmm. while this cover slide simply has Leslie and myself in the Invasive Species Coordination Unit, we do need to give credit to our legal staff and specifically Tom Berkman uh, here in DEC and Ag and Markets, Tim Sweeney, who we've worked closely with over the last couple years uh, to develop these regulations. Um, and prior to that, the four-tier team itself. Just a little bit of background information. Uh, the legislation that authorizes this work, Title 17, which was put in place in 2008, had some language in it that identified invasive plants and animals as an unacceptable risk to New York's environment and economy, and also acknowledged that the risk is increasing through time as more invasive species become established. I'm not sure how to solve that little uh, high-pitched noise, but uh, we'll just keep going. Uh, DC, in cooperation with Ag and Markets, was uh, charged with restricting the sale, purchase, possession, propagation, introduction, importation, transport, and disposal of invasive species, hence the regulations. As I indicated earlier, the authority was initially established in 2008 with Title 17, the New York Invasive Species Council legislation, which charged the department to develop a report, which was submitted in 2010, under ECL 91705H. And then that legislation was revised in 2012, charging the department in cooperation with Ag and Markets to develop regulations by 2013. Invasive species are defined in the original Title 17, 2008, as invasive species, uh, meaning a species that is non-native to the ecosystem under consideration and whose introduction causes or is likely to cause economic, environmental harm, or harm to human health. And specifically, the legislation indicated that the harm must significantly outweigh any benefits in developing of these regulations. This definition is based largely on the federal definition for invasive species as well. So we have a continuation of a similar uh, definition. The four-tier report that was developed in 2010 uh, had the legislative mandate to uh, do a number of different tasks, but primarily to develop a procedure for the review of non-native species uh, and recommendations for the legislation in the form of a report. We're also supposed to come up with several lists. We did include lists in the report, but they're simply lists of candidate species for potential inclusion and in future regulation. They were not broken down into categories of prohibited, regulated, or unregulated. The list report did include examples of assessment tools, both the ecological and the social economic assessments. Um, and that report is available on the DEC's website. So the four-tier team worked for about 18 months between 2008 and 2009. Uh, on their charge uh, to develop acceptable procedures balancing harm with benefits, produce lists of species, and submit a report. And this group of about 16 stakeholders included federal agencies, state agencies, NGOs, and academic institutions. And you see a list of a majority of those uh, here on the right-hand side of the slide. The listing components uh, that we needed to develop in part in the report and later in the actual regulations were the assessment tools and thanks to prior work uh, through TNC, which I'll get to in a few minutes, uh, we had a basis to develop an invasivity assessment tool which was modified for animals from an original plant tool. And then we also developed a social economic assessment tool. Um, contracts were developed to enable multiple species to be put through these tools. 
A review procedure was established for those species that were assessed elsewhere, and proposed lists were developed. Also, we had to document the effect of listing, and SAPA, the State Administrative Procedures Act, requires a number of documents be uh, published in part uh, of the rulemaking process. Uh, the environmental assessment negative declaration, a coastal assessment, an ENB notice, state register publication, and much of this is defined in the New York State rulemaking manual. So it's a very standardized practice. Our timeline that we developed early in the rulemaking process uh, was an ideal timeline, and we have had some delays, so we're a little bit behind in delivering. Uh, but basically, it was a two-stage process in the timeline. The first stage was to develop a timeline, a process, the assessment tools, the completing of uh, species put through the assessment tools, uh, priority lists of species for uh, candidate listing. And the second stage was to classify the species based on the outcomes of the assessment tools into prohibited or regulated classifications, draft rule text, have outreach to key stakeholders, develop public comment uh, through hearings and reaching out to stakeholders, and then publish the final rule. So right now we are about halfway through the second stage of the process. Ideally, the legislature requested that this be done in the fall of 2013. We had hoped, ideally, to be able to complete all stages by the end of 2013, but we're probably going to run into the beginning of 2014 in our process. In the 2010 report, a flow diagram was included that demonstrates some of the process. Uh, that we went through in part that was explained earlier, but in part I'll explain right now. And the first step of the process was to develop a list of species by looking at other states and other regulatory agencies that have gone through a similar process. Conduct a rapid assessment of those species to determine which might be appropriate for New York State to consider, and develop a candidate list from that species list, which was in the 2010 report. Determine which of those species are already federally listed, so that can be indicated on the assessment tools, and then complete <clears throat> assessment tools, both <clears throat> ecological and social economic, for the candidate species. At this point, approximately 183 plants have been assessed and approximately 83 animal species have been assessed. From those assessments, develop recommendations from the assessment team that then went to the advisory committee and the council, the advisory committee being made up of 25 NGOs, the council and nine state agencies. And then uh, draft rules, public comment, and a final rule. So here we're about three quarters away through the flow diagram process. Transitioning from the four-tier report to the actual development of regulations, uh, we had originally requested an agency staff support increase. That didn't really happen, but it was a nice uh, uh, attempt. Uh, we did ask for some funding for species assessments, and that did occur. And so we were able to contract out with uh, a contractor for animal assessments and currently a contractor for some additional plant assessment work. All this effort was coordinated through the Invasive Species Coordination Unit, and between the report and the development of new regulations, we needed additional authority. And that 2012 updated legislation gave the department the authority to enact these regulations. Prior to those 2012 changes, we didn't really have firm authority. So we have developed draft rules and regs. Uh, we've considered cultivars. Uh, and during the, some of the discussion, we considered climate change, but it was a little too challenging to work into the assessment tools that we've used in this initial rulemaking process. So it is an issue that we tabled for the future. Those of you that have looked at any of the assessments are somewhat familiar with uh, the breakdown 
within the tools themselves, but the ecological assessment, which is a large emphasis is placed on the ecological assessment initially, consists of 20 questions, which is approximately 40% ecological impacts, 25% biological characteristics and dispersal, 25% ecological amplitude, and 10% difficulty of control. So to date, uh, TNC took the lead and ran 183 species through the plan assessment tool. Those were then uh, vetted through an expert botany team of about 15 botanists on their completion. The animal assessments were conducted largely through a contract with Adirondack Research Incorporated with DEC input as well. And approximately 83 animal species have been assessed to date. Those species that ranked very high and high and in some cases medium ranked, were then vetted for placement in the prohibited or the regulated classification for the regulations. And all of these assessments for the ecological side of the assessments are available on the nyis.info webpage. As I indicated earlier, cultivars were considered. Uh, actually, before I went into the cultivars, just a a brief moment on a social economic assessment. The social economic assessment is a, a much quicker, uh, shorter assessment tool than the ecological assessment and consists of six questions focused on human health, economics, and cultural impacts of species in question. So for each of the species that ended up being listed as prohibited or regulated, there is both an ecological and a social economic assessment that has been prepared. On the issue of cultivars, uh, while language was included in the proposed regulations addressing cultivars, no actual exemptions for cultivars were included. The language that was provided uh, for exemptions in the future uh, focuses on those that may be exempt being cultivars that the primary means of reproduction is not vegetative, a cultivar that is completely sterile, or a cultivar that is unable to establish populations. So a tool does exist, again, thanks to TNC and a subgroup of the uh, initial plant assessment team that, that helped work on the cultivar assessment tool and made that available. Uh, we do expect probably uh, during the comment period to be asked to consider different cultivars, uh, whether or not we can actually make that into the final rule or perhaps have to defer that to an additional rulemaking down the road uh, is yet to be determined. Just quickly, uh, we'll get into the components of the rule in a moment here. But uh, cultivars are defined as plants selected for desirable characteristics under cultivation. And there are a considerable number of cultivars in the trade. Just looking at one wholesale catalog that I happen to have on my desk, there are five cultivars for Japanese barberry in the, that single catalog. So the rulemaking documentation that had to be developed uh, under SAPA focused on uh, four main products that the DEC took lead, a summary of express terms, and express terms, a summary of regulatory impact statement, and the regulatory impact statement, and then three documents that Ag and Markets took the lead on developing, the regulatory flexibility analysis, the rural area flexibility analysis, and the job impact statement. All of these documents are currently on the DEC website, and the reason for summaries being developed in addition to the full express terms and the regulatory impact statement, is that if the document is over a certain length, they cannot publish the entirety in the New York State Register, and so they publish the summary. The full documents are made available on the DEC website, though. So key in these documents, though, is the express terms, which is in itself the proposed rule. There are 12 sections to the express terms, including the purpose, scope, and applicability, a set of definitions, a list of proposed prohibited invasive species, a list of proposed regulated invasive species, the classification 
direction on how we determine species fell into prohibited and regulated classification, conditioning governing regulated invasive species, language regarding petitions for the future addition or removal of species from these lists, exemptions, language regarding invasive species permits, penalties and enforcement, coordination, and severability. The last two being largely uh, legal uh, text. So for the prohibited list of species that were included in the proposed regulations, uh, they are identified by scientific and common name. And the basis for these lists is in the authorizing legislation. Hence, there's a two-part component to the prohibited species list. One, that no person shall knowingly possess with the intent to sell, import, purchase, transport, or introduce a prohibited species. And two, no person shall sell, import, purchase, transport, introduce, or propagate a pro prohibited invasive species. So a little bit complicated, but the basis is in the authorizing legislation. The proposed regulations include 125 species in the prohibited classification, including three algae and cyanobacteria, 69 plants, 14 fish, 16 aquatic invertebrates, 13 terrestrial invertebrates, six terrestrial and aquatic vertebrates, and four fungi. Some examples of those species include didymo, Japanese barberry, autumn olive, kogan grass, purple loosestripe, golden bamboo, and yellow groove bamboo, multiflora rose, three different snakehead species, four different Asian carp species, Chinese mystery snail, sumino oyster, rusty crayfish, three giant land snails, Asian earthworms, mute swan, and Eurasian boar. For the prohibited species, there is one individual species that is included with a one-year grace period, and that's Japanese barberry. And Eurasian boar has a grace period set by standalone legislation of September 2015 that was recently passed. The entire rule itself will be in effect six months after being finalized to give uh, stakeholders time for their review and understanding of the legislation and for us to reach out and educate key stakeholders that will need to be notified. Regulated invasive species under the proposed regulations are again identified by scientific and common name. And again, uh, based on the authorizing legislation, no person shall knowingly introduce into a free living state or introduce by a means that one knew should have led to a introduction into a free living state any regulated species. Although individual shall be allowed to legally possess, sell, buy, propagate, or transport a regulated species. So key to this is the definition of a free living state for regulated species. And regulated species in uh, free living state would include public lands and lands connected to those public lands, natural areas, public waters and waters connected to the public waters, and water use facilities with outflows providing direct access to public waters. There are several exceptions to that definition and that artificial ponds and water gardens with no public uh, water outlet are exempt. Waters entirely within private lands and not connected to public waters are an exception. And water use facilities with outflows not providing access to public waters are an exception. Several of the conditions that go along with the regulated invasive species include labeling to inform customers that regulated invasive species are harmful to the environment, instruction for the care intending to prevent the spread or introduction of invasive species listed as regulated, and written notification to landscaping clients pertaining to regulated invasive species that are used. 29 species were categorized as regulated in the proposed regulation, two algae and cyanobacteria, six plants, 12 fish, four aquatic invertebrates, and five terrestrial and aquatic vertebrates. 
Several examples of those regulated species include cylindro, Norway maple, burning bush, Chinese silver grass, black locust, goldfish, common carp or koi, Asian swamp eel, blue and Nile tilapia, tench, two lionfish, Japanese mystery snail, European green crab, monk parakeet, and red ear slider. The proposed regulations do include language regarding permits, which can be issued for research, education, or other approved activities for prohibited species, or for the introduction of regulated species into a free living state. The language uh, included in the proposed regulations uh, discusses application process, criteria, conditions, and records keeping and reporting, although the actual application is still in development for a permit. So while there is language uh, regarding these permit issues in the proposed regulations, we're still working on the process uh, internally. The proposed regulations also include language for petitioning to add or remove a species from the prohibited or regulated list. An individual organization who wishes to prohibit, uh, add to the prohibited or regulated list or remove a species from the list must submit the following documentation to the department. And this was based in part on the federal noxious weed law the scientific and common name, the taxonomic classification, any synonym that the species is known as, the life history, distribution, control for the species, and any known federal or local regulations targeting the species. Also, consequences of introduction, its likelihood of spread, its spread in its potential range to date, any control that has been successful or unsuccessful, and for cultivars, evidence that the cultivar has low risk. The public participation component of this rulemaking process includes a 60-day public comment period and four public hearings. As indicated earlier, the state register publication, including the summary documents, was released on October 23rd, the ENB notice announcing the release of the State Register publication on October 23rd, and the DEC website went live with the full documentation October 23rd. Prior to the release, we had outreach to the council, the nine council agencies, and the 25 NGOs that make up the advisory committee, and key stakeholders who may be uh, pertinent to this rulemaking process. The four hearings that are currently scheduled are December 10th in Buffalo, New York, December 11th in Syracuse, New York, December 16th in Albany, and December 17th in Stony Brook. All of those hearing dates are open to the public and beginning 2 p.m. except for the Albany hearing, which will begin at 3 p.m. Program staff will be available at each of these hearings to answer questions prior to the hearing itself. For public comments, we would encourage stakeholders to either write to us in writing or email a mailbox that was set up just for these regulations, invasivesregs at gw.dec.state.ny.us. Again, that's invasives, plural, regs, plural, at gw.dec.state.ny.us. Or send in comments by mail between October 23rd and December 23rd. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. The proposed regulation documents are at the website listed here. The express terms at the second website embedded within the first. And if you have any questions on the documentation, feel free to give us a ring at either my number or Leslie's.